Hello and welcome to another episode of Forkful of Noodles. I am Krish Mohan. That's right, we're back. Before we dive into this week's episode, I just want to let you guys know uh, that you can support this show, my podcast, Taboo Table Talk, and DIY stand-up comedy tours by donating to the Patreon. Go to patreon.com slash krishmohanhaha, and you can check out all the details, rewards, and goals that we have set up. Uh, All of it starts at $2 a day, and it helps uh, me fund this show and make a living off of generating content. This is what I do full-time. I generate comedy content full-time. So if you would like to donate, you can go to patreon.com slash krishmohanhaha. Okay, let's dive right into it. Religion, the spark of controversy since literally the dawn of answers. It's an idea that was invented a very long time ago. It's been around since before science. Religion is the conjecture to an answer, and science is the discovery to the answer. But they've been feuding since the earliest humans conceived the idea of a what-if scenario. God is like the ultimate what-if scenario, you know? And And our species has not been handling that very well at all. So we contemplated, you know, what if what if there's like a being out there that's like making all the cheese and then it, and then it's like the being is also like made out of cheese and that being is, is a god named Gorgonzolas. But instead of saying, well, that would be super cool, uh, let's figure out if it is Gorgonzolas or if it's something else that's making the global cheese surplus. But instead of that, we basically said it, it, it is Gorgonzolas and, and it is a he and he is white and and then we start wars over this and now and now cheese is ruined because we thought a what if scenario was the absolute truth the way i see it religion is a tool and we as a species have been misusing it for a very long time now but look it's like fire right fire is an amazing tool we can use it to cook and weld and get high but we can also use it to burn societies to the ground, right? Like, we, it can nourish us, or it can also give us arson, which we can use to destroy everything that we've built. And that's the same with religion, right? We can either use it as a tool to try and understand the vastness of the universe in conjunction with science, or use it as a means to kill each other and tell each other we're wrong, which which we've been doing for a very long time now. But religion is something that's extremely prevalent in the lives of almost every single person, permeated through every little bit of our zeitgeist. Right? Capitalism is basically the religion of money, and malls and Amazons are its temples. And, and, and yes... Yes, with the technological advancements that we are making, even our temples are moving to an online platform where prayers can be charged a shipping and handling fee. TGIF was basically a religion that was keeping citizens from going out into the world and enjoying the company of others and the creation of great art because, well, well, boy, Mindy sure is going to get into some crazy adventures this week. Huh? She bought a cat. Even atheism can lean towards the religious. The the obsession with disproving God in and of itself can be a religion. Taking science solely at its word is like subscribing to a religious doctrine. And, And let's be honest with ourselves here. Some of the stories that we hear about the scientists of of our day kind of are a little far-fetched. I mean, the story of Isaac Newton discovering gravity after he got bonked on the head by an apple. Uh, I mean, okay, so if we're going to subscribe to that story, we might as well also believe that the reason why he just tried to find gravity and what, what makes it work is because he was trying to bring God down to the earth. The man was a devout Catholic or Christian. Eh. Hey, at that point, he could just be like, hey, check this out, Lord. It's a prism. This has all the colors you invented in it. And God would just be like, yeah, yeah, I I invented the colors. Okay, why are you, this is not impressive to me. Are you, 
did you do this to impress me? And then it would just be like a whole story about Isaac Newton's psyche collapsing because he he thought he was showing God the prism and God wasn't impressed by it, you know? But in reality, he was probably just on LSD. All right. Uh, I'm, I'm sure there are a lot of atheists screaming at their screens right now. And, and I understand, right? Some atheists see religion as the evil. The idea is the problem. Okay, I just ask you to look at it this way, right? Just consider this. If we can consider religion as a tool, then someone misused that tool with you, and now you hate that tool, right? It's like, look. If someone dropped a hammer on your foot, are you going to spend the rest of your life hating hammers? Or are you going to make sure that people with hammers use it properly and safely? It sparked wars. And religious wars are like the most fucked up version of my dad is better than your dad argument, right? It's Just a little heads up, guys. It, it kind of seems like the monotheistic God is the same God, right? Like, it just seems like it's one dad making his stepkids fight each other to show him who loves him the most so that they can get taken out for ice cream. And, and right now, nobody's getting taken out for ice cream. And one religion is fractured into a thousand little tiny pieces that's telling the older religion to hate the younger religion because they've got middle child syndrome and that's how they feel like they can get all the attention. And yes, I am talking about you, Christianity. All right, And it seems like you have undiagnosed disassociative identity disorder mixed with middle child complex. Right? Why, why don't you just relax for a little bit? It's been a real stressful millennia for you. The, the other two are, are just at odds with each other and both have been politicized to the point of mass manipulation and are being used by warmongers for the sake of their profits. Uh, look, the, the point is I really doubt genocide is the way to get ice cream or a parent's attention. You, you guys should really look into like a different father figure maybe. At the current moment, the Catholic Church is one of the personalities of Christianity is going through what has been described as an onslaught of sexual abuse scandals, right? Where bishops and cardinals uh, covered up something that has been a joke for hacky comedians for years. The Catholic priest banging kids, which, which is horrible as an act, but pretty bad as a joke. Most people, including laxed and practicing Catholics, don't believe the church was looking out for this predatory behavior, but rather spent most of their time covering it up, right? Even cool Pope Francis was put off by all this. Turns out being a, a sexual predator towards kids is like a big no-no for the Lord. It, it might be time to find a new rendition of the Ten Commandments, you know, one that says that you can't fuck kids uh, and the gays are cool. Also, masturbate every once in a while. It's fine. Just clean up after yourself, huh? But it does reveal a huge glaring problem about humans having chosen to protect an idea instead of their kids, right? They protected these so-called leaders instead of removing them from the religion or looking at what the cause of the behavior was, right? If you tell a group of men that they can't masturbate or, or have sex till marriage, that's, that's a lot of pent-up hormones that aren't going anywhere. Clearly, it's one of the reasons that led to this scandal and a litany of other toxic behaviors like misogyny, homophobia, and the arbitrary use of myrrh. And I doubt Jesus, the super chill dude that didn't want women to be seed receptacles for the men or the ones that are meant to be closest to God would be the ones that are backed up for decades, wanted all of this to happen or even wanted that to be a part of their rules. Look, if you're still consistently having wet dreams as an adult, I don't think you're going to be led into the pristine purity of heaven. That's that's just not cool. I mean, those poor angels must be doing spunk-covered laundry for eternity. That's awful, 
right? Maybe you should stop spreading your propaganda of celibacy and do these angels a favor and just jack off every once in a while. You know, just make sure you clean up after yourself. I really can't stress that enough, right? That's that's what the whole don't drop your seed on the ground verse is really about. But that's how you justify your hatred using the tool of religion, right? You should hate the gays and, and women who speak and anyone outside your religion. So if you're going to take an action uh, uh, that shows love to yourself in a religion that's been co-opted to hate, it totally makes sense as to why masturbation is basically illegal, right? You, you have to hate yourself too, okay? Till God can show you love. And only God can love like a, a possessive sociopathic boyfriend in a, in a lifetime movie. Okay? If your religious rules are predicated on how not to live your life, then of course it's going to lead to negative consequences. Instead of attacking the problem head on and, and figuring out how to keep your church safe, you chose to lie for the sake of the fallacy of purity. Tools are meant to evolve. They become other tools. They, they become multi-purpose. And this is what happens when you say a tool can only do one thing, right? And, and this tool has been used to, to destroy and ignite fear instead of being malleable and adapt with changing times. And this purity is what I believe is happening to the left and liberals, the monotheism has permeated into their philosophies. Right now, I think the left is and liberals are looking for their perfect, pure individual. Essentially, they're God, right? This, this figure says all the right words, uses the right pronouns, boils the gender gap down to only pay. Basically, they say what the left wants to hear taking accountability away from their complexity and simplifying the complexities of hum the human condition into just good and evil. Again, kind of like what humanity has done with the idea of religion. So when someone commits a transgression of any kind and they were coveted by the left, they are cast out and considered irredeemable. There, there are a set of rules and standards that the left and liberals adhere to, and if you're not part of that, then you get no protection and are probably a Nazi, which which means they're probably a perfect, perfect candidate for the Catholic Church to support. In search of this perfect being, we've all forgotten that we're all just human beings, right? We're all flawed and broken and need a little bit of help getting better. I mean, we aren't this ethereal being in some distant, unattainable plane. We're, we're right in front of each other. And the beauty of looking at the world as a series of grays is that we can help each other sort all of this stuff out. Misuse of religion with a monotheistic lens shows us that it's only been used to control people using fear and violence, right? At least polytheism shows that the gods are flawed a little bit, right? In Hinduism, Shiva clearly needs some anger management. In Greek mythology, Zeus is basically a man whore, possibly sex addict, right? And, and the Norse gods sold off the rights to their story to the Marvel Universe. The, the point is, we all make mistakes and have misused the tools. But if we can forgive and figure out what they did wrong and give them a little bit of redemption to, to better themselves, maybe all of this stuff can improve. Religion is a tool that we can use to ignite curiosities in each other. It's a tool that can be used to discover what the moral gray areas are and what the absolutes are. It's a tool that can be used to encourage masturbation instead of demonize it, where in the end you might become a demon yourself. If we can just course correct the way we use religion, we might not need to be this fractured. That has been your fork full of noodles for this week. I hope you guys enjoyed it. We are back. We're back. Uh, took a summer hiatus uh, during a very long four month tour uh, and had to do some reformatting for the sh uh, for the show. So we're gonna be trying a, a couple different little things out. It's still gonna be this sort of content, this uh, esoteric philosophy based political current events news type of topics. 
Uh, so I hope you guys enjoyed the episode. Uh, if you did, leave a like and a comment. You can follow me on uh, Twitter and Instagram. I'm on Instagram now, uh, at Haha. Like the Facebook page uh, and share this with your friends or your enemies or whoever you think would benefit from a video like this. Uh, and if you would like to support this show, please donate to the Patreon. Uh, go to patreon.com slash krishmohanhaha. Uh, I do comedy full-time. Uh, I tour full-time, and I do these shows full-time, and I put it out for free. Uh, and I don't particularly like paywalls. There's going to be a couple little things uh, that are going to be behind the paywall. But the Patreon all starts at $2 a month. That's a cost of one cup of coffee a month, right? You can just make a French press and support a really cool, socially conscious DIY stand-up comedy show. Uh, go to patreon.com slash krishmohanhaha. Uh, you can also check out all of my stand-up comedy at uh, Bandcamp. You can go to bandcamp, uh, dot com, ramen noodles comedy dot bandcamp dot com. That's R-A-M-A-N noodles comedy dot bandcamp dot com. If you subscribe, uh, you get exclusive unreleased stand-up comedy and storytelling material every single month directly to your inbox. Uh, but I do have live stand-up comedy shows coming. I am heading up to the Northeast working on my full hour uh, in, in September and October right before I get married, you guys. It's pretty exciting. Uh, I am coming to uh, Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, Johnstown, Pennsylvania, Morgantown, West Virginia, Marietta, Ohio. I will also be in uh, Kalamazoo, Michigan, Lansing, Michigan, and Detroit, Michigan. Uh, but for all of my tour dates, you can go to ramennoodlescomedy.com. That's R-A-M-A-N, noodlescomedy.com. Uh, come hang out with me on the road. It'd be super cool to see you guys, and we can get into weird, socially conscious, esoteric conversation uh, while we get a drink. Uh, it'd be great to see you guys. But we are back. We are going to be... Uh, rolling out videos uh, every single week again. I'm very excited to get back into that groove and get back into that rhythm. Uh, so uh, stay tuned and thanks for getting into it. We'll see you on the road.